When you're typing with the text tool, if you choose it, click on the screen, you'll see that there's placeholder text there. If I type straight away, you'll see that that's replaced. I can highlight that text and I can change the font here and you can see that it's changing on the artboard. If I choose a font like Mistral, Mistral doesn't come in any other type but regular. If I was to choose Arial, which we're all familiar with, you'll see that I have these options here for italic, bold italic and the like. I can change the size of the font here. Because I moved that font, if I double click it, that'll put my cursor inside and if I continue to double click, it will select all of that text. I can adjust the distance between letters. That's called kerning. So if I put my cursor here between the J and the O, and under the character option, where I can adjust the size, the font, and all that sort of thing, this kerning option here allows me to adjust that distance. And you saw the distance between the J and the O shrink. I'll do that again. And I'll do it so you can really tell the difference. So that's called kerning. You're probably not familiar with that because it's not available in Microsoft Word or those sort of programs. If you're familiar with InDesign, you will have seen it there. Still using this text tool, instead of just clicking on the screen, if I drag out, I end up with a paragraph. And as I start to type inside that box, you can see that the text is going to flow and reflow as I adjust the size of that box. So if I make this a little bit wider, the word can jumped up there. And now you can see that it's resized. With this text here, I can resize it by dragging it out. So if we're going to type single words, it's probably best to click on the type tool, click on the page and type. If you're going to type paragraphs, it's better to click on the type tool, drag out a box, type your text, and then you can resize and reflow that text. Color works exactly as you'd expect it to work. And now that text is that color. Similarly, Instead of just typing normal text, we can type on a path. So if I draw a line, I can type on a path. So I'll select the type on a path tool, click on that line, and you can see there it's filled with placeholder text. As soon as I start typing, that text gets replaced. Highlight it, make it bigger if I want. Change the font color, change the, the, the font itself, change the size, the style, all of that sort of thing that you'd expect. Instead of just typing on a straight line, I can type on a spiral. So instead of choosing the line segment tool, if I choose that spiral tool, drag it out, type on a path, and it fills with placeholder text. Start typing straight away. Now you can see I've typed too much text. There's a little plus sign there. So if I double click, I've selected all of the text. If I go to my characters option and make this 
30 point, you can see that it's all fitting now on that line. If I select my text, you can see that handle just here. And that's how I can choose the end point or the starting point of my text. Like that. Or if I spin it around, I can easily determine the angle that that text is on. A lot of you will be familiar with web dings and dingbats and the like from Microsoft Word. Those funny characters you can type. In Illustrator, they're called glyphs. I can choose any font I like, but if I choose web dings, for instance, and now if I double click anywhere on the screen because I've got the font tool, type tool selected, I can add a glyph. Now it's text. That means I can resize it. So there's all sorts of different glyphs in there for you to use. For instance, there's a map of the world. Select the text tool, click on the screen, double click our map of the world, choose our selection tool and adjust it. I'm holding down the shift key so it stays in proportion. There's any number of glyphs that you can use. It's font. So if I highlight it, I could change the color of that font. And now it's red. And I can change the size and I can position it anywhere I like. 